Well, hi, we're going to do week one assignment two in Illustrator. And I've got my workspace open, and I'm going to use my color palette here to choose a color. A lot of times we'll use the color guide or the color swatches, but it's not as easy to control the saturation level as it is in color in the HSD slider mode. So I'm going to separate this out, and we can remove this from the uh, recording window and just focus on this. Uh, anytime you want to reset your workspace, go to Window Workspace Essentials and it will take you back to where you were. Okay, now selecting a color, if we're in RGB mode, for example, and we want to select a color, we may not get a color that's at maximum saturation. We can then check the color and notice that this is a, a, a tone. It's got a lot of white in the mix, a lot of black in the mix, and notice the color that is at maximum saturation. These numbers, the slider is at 100%, the brightness is at 100%, that makes the color maximum saturation. Any, you know, any reduction in um, saturation slider is like adding white to the mix, that produces a tint. Any reduction in brightness, that's like adding black to the mix, that produces a shade. And any reduction in both the saturation and the brightness produces a tone, okay? So I'm going to start with a maximum saturated color. I want to use color 120. It's a nice bright green. So I'm going to click on that, use 120, 100%. If I choose a color that's too far away on the spectrum, when I blend them together, what's going to happen is I'm going to get tones. So I want to make sure I select a color that is within a, a, a narrow area. So from green to, to yellow, that's going to produce a nice smooth transition. So I want to choose color 60 because I happen to know that that's the perfect yellow that is on the um, color wheel in the uh, additive subtractive color wheel, which we'll get to when we get uh, when we work on color wheels. Okay, so now I have my two colors and the next step, very important step, is to count the number of steps in between because we're going to remake these in the blend to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And then this next step is very important. What we want to do is select those squares and delete them. If we forget to delete them, the blend won't work. We'll see all these series of lines there, and it just won't work. Okay, the next step is to select the two outer squares and go to Object, Blend, Blend Options. And this opens this window, Specified Steps. I've typed in 8, and I say OK. Now we go to Object, Blend, Make, and we have a nice smooth transition. Click anywhere on the artboard to release the group. Use the color picker and notice that the colors are at maximum saturation, but the gradation uh, in you is a gradual transition. So now we've met the criteria for row one. If we go too far, remember, on the color wheel, then the blends are going to be tones. So we'll deal with that in another tutorial. Okay, now let's go to the second uh, row, row two. We're going to produce a gradation in value, maintaining a fixed U. So I'm just, just for consistency's sake, maintaining a fixed U. I'm going to use my same color, 120, and instead of uh, a tint or a tone, I'm going to use a darker shade of, of green because I want to go from a darker value. You could go from a lighter value or a middle value to whatever value you want. You can start dark and end up with a lighter value. We could start with a lighter tint, for example, and end up with a darker shade or a tone. But in this case, I'm going to start with this darker shade, and for this square, I'm going to produce a light tint of the color because I want to maintain a fixed U. So my color number there, the U number, is 120. And notice the, the appearance of the U has changed because I'm in this tint mode. Notice how the bar changes to tones or shades up here, depending on what we're doing. So I want a nice light tint, a nice minty green light value tint of my color. Okay, all right, so that'll do. Okay, so now what I want to do is go to the next step, select the middle squares, delete those. Oops, my mouse is very sensitive. Okay. Okay, and select the outer squares and go to Object, Blend. I can check my number of blend options, making sure they have the same eight specified steps. OK, go to Object, Blend, Make. And now I have an, a nice transition in value from a darker shade of green to a lighter tint of green. And we use the color picker. And notice that this is a shade. 
This is a tint because there's white in this square, black in this square. When we mix them together, the middle squares are going to be tones all the way across. Okay, so it depends on what's going on on either end, what happens in the middle. All right, now for row three, we're going to do a gradation and saturation, maintaining a fixed U and value. Now, for consistency's sake, let's just start with the same value. Now, I have the same color, the same U, green. Now, I happen to know that a middle, uh, that a, a maximum saturation green, when converted to grayscale, is a middle value gray. So, I'm going to choose a middle value gray for my final square. I could choose a little bit of color in it in order to maintain a consistent U or a fixed U. And because I have a little bit of white in the mix, I just reduce the value a little bit down just to kind of produce a color that maybe is um, going to be um, a consistent value when I produce my blend. Okay, so now I have to go to that next step, delete my middle squares, select the two outer squares again, and I happen to know that I have the proper number of steps already set in my blend option, so I'm just going to go to Object Blend Make, and now I have a nice transition from this green to this green. And I'm going to show you how to check your work after we save it. So the next step, I'm going to go to Save for Web and Devices, and I want to make sure I'm in JPEG Maximum. My image size does not need to be changed. We have to click that tab in Illustrator because the, the, the template is perfect. But we want to make sure this uh, lock is checked, constrained proportion box is checked. If we uncheck it, it disappears. If we check it, it prevents distortion in the image file. So I'm going to go to Save, and that's going to open up my Save window, and I'm going to save it, put my last name first in the image file name, my first name, the W stands for week, week one. A stands for assignment, assignment two, and then I'm going to save it. And now I have my image file saved in a file. I'm going to pause while I open that and show you how to check your work in Photoshop because there's a quick and easy way to do it in Photoshop. All right, so I've opened my file, last name first, week number, assignment number, and it's good to keep a folder with your assignments, you know, your, your whatever the name of the class is, and making sure you have uh, the, the week number, assignment number. It'll be easy to find your work when making revisions. Okay, and now we can take our color picker and check our work here. These are all at maximum saturation all the way across, a nice transition. And we have a nice transition in value, right? It's easy to see uh, looking at the, the numbers here. It's getting lighter, right? And now when looking at a maximum saturated U, it's going to be at 100%. But in order to really check the value, we need to convert it to grayscale. We can either go to Image Adjustments, gray, Desaturate, and that will convert it to grayscale. And it looks like this is getting a little bit darker. Yeah, it's within 4%. Another way to do it would be to go to use our keyboard shortcut, Command, if you have a Mac, Command and the letter U, or Alt Option and the letter U if you have a PC. So that opens my U saturation sliders and I can remove the color immediately, convert it to grayscale, and you can very easily see this goes from a dark to a light value. Check these numbers. These are all at maximum saturation. They're 50%. It's not budging all the way across. Okay. Now I had a little bit of adjustment there in my gray because I wanted to make sure I had some color in it, right? So this goes from 50, this goes to 46. If I wanted to adjust that a little bit, maybe make that a little bit lighter, I could say, you know, maybe make it just a little bit lighter. Add that color there, convert it to grayscale again by command or alt option U. Check that value. Oops, I better get that out of the way so we can see that's at 47, that's at 50. Well, I modified it a little bit. Within a few degrees is good. So either way, you're good to go met the criteria for all three rows.